What's the difference between poetry and prose? Because you're a poet and a writer. The, the distinction is somewhat like trying to draw a line between where the plant kingdom leads off and, and, and the animal kingdom begins, and there's probably not even a real demarcation that's either needed or can be drawn uh, precisely. Uh, so I think at a certain point, in the hands of uh, certain great writers, there's no distinction to be made between poetry and prose. There's a type of poetic prose which is elevated as any, any, any poem you could read. But, but one of the distinctions I would draw is that, that though we both, a poet and a, and a novelist, for example, uses the same medium, the same diction, words of the English language, uh, I, I think a novel is more constructed, therefore more of the solar left-handed side of the brain, whereas poetry seems to be dictated by an older mode of grammar, keeping in mind our earlier definitions of it, that's definitely lunar, Definitely feminine, uh, and uh, and 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 uses the language in a way that's more akin, as many poets have pointed out over the millennia in all languages, to a type of dream grammar. You know, closer to a kind of pictographic understanding of reality. I, I like the comparison to Chinese pictographs because there's really no grammar or logic of a language uh, uh, as there is, say, in English or, or many other languages. What, what, what the, the Chinese do with pictograms is they'll, they'll charge a field with icons, iconic uh, symbols and pictures. They'll put six pictures in a, in a field of awareness without necessarily connecting them. They leave the connections up to the viewer. So, so they're capable, in, in the, though it's a cruder, so-called cruder form of expression, it's capable of being charged with more nuance and subtlety uh, and, 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 and being more collaboratively engaged as a language uh, because of the element that has to be supplied by the reader or, or the purviewer in the understanding of those symbols and what they might mean. And therefore more poetic in that sense because uh, the experience of poetry, contrary to what's often and, and regretfully taught in schools as, as something quantifiable, the experience of poetry is, is like the experience of music. No, no one is sitting there constantly trying to analyze what the music means and feeling depressed if they don't understand what that musical bar meant, you know? And poetry is, is, is music, is, is the music of the soul when it's moved to speak. It speaks musically and naturally in everybody. I've seen ex-convicts, heavy-duty ex-convicts, break down and speak that way when they've had their heart broken by a woman they genuinely loved. I've seen that with my own eyes. It's always poetry, you know? And, uh, and so to me, poetry is that music, and it needs no other justification than its own existence. It's an experience in its own right, not a comment on experience, which tends to be more the the proper Provence of prose, which is outside the living experience, whereas music's inside it. It's what the world looks like from inside out. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. you know. If, if you if you were to if if you could imagine experience your body from the inside, it might look like your mind. <laughs> you know. So 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 to me, poetry is the proper vehicle of the, of, of that interior explanation. You know. Mm -hmm. You know, whereby, you know, you're the explorer of your own happy ends without knowing what those are before you go, you know. You know, you become the road by walking it, so to speak. That's, that's the direction intuitively of, of poetry, whereas prose tends to construct itself, and, and necessarily so. It's hard to write a 900-page novel <laughs> and, and write the lyrical energy of it all to the end. Like, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a great wave you can surf to shore.